Hey guys, today I'll show you a supernatural horror mystery TV series named The Guest, Part 1. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The drama begins at a seaside where an old woman is handing out flyers under a scorching sun. A young girl passing by slaps the flyers out of her hand. The old woman picks up the flyers feeling humiliated. At this moment, her eyes change, becoming inhuman. Silently approaching with a knife in hand, she grabs the young girl from behind and starts stabbing her wildly. Onlookers scatter in terror while a creepy smile forms on the old woman's face. The story flashes back to 20 years ago, during the childhood of a boy named Yoon, who was able to see spirits since he was young. His mother, like generations before her, was a shaman in this village, while his father was an ordinary man. To allow Yoon to lead a normal life, the parents kept his abilities a secret from others. On an island, a feast celebrating the season of fish was held, and all villagers were obliged to participate. Bored, Yoon asked his uncle why they held this event. The uncle, taken aback, told the terrifying tale of a malevolent demon. This master demon had once possessed people, instigating them to kill many others. The villagers tried to drive it away, but it blinded its own right eye and jumped into the sea. It floated, unyielding in death for days and nights, watching the villagers. Yoon's mother heard this, slapped the uncle, and grabbed Yoon. She scolded the uncle for telling such scary stories to children. The uncle simply laughed it off as if nothing had happened. As night fell, the festival entered its most important ceremony. The villagers placed lanterns in the sea as an offering. The uncle accidentally slipped into the sea, causing the villagers to laugh. But as everyone turned to leave, the uncle still in the sea felt something behind him. The moment he turned, he was dragged under. The crowd heard a splash, but they could not see the uncle, and fear spread across their faces. The uncle, dragged far away, struggled to the surface, screaming for help. Just then, Yoon's shaman grandmother began to shake uncontrollably, shouting that a ghost is here. The uncle, once rescued and brought ashore, began to act strangely. He clawed at his own face until it bled, his right eye becoming blind. When the grandfather asked concernedly, the uncle suddenly stabbed him with a small knife. The strong men nearby rushed to restrain him, but the uncle's right eye turned a bloody black, and he threw off the muscular men with monstrous strength. He raised his knife to stab the grandfather again. The grandmother shouted at him to put down the knife. Hearing her cry, the uncle paused, but in the next second, he stabbed his right eye with the knife, shocking everyone. The uncle, his face covered in blood, turned to look at Yoon as if he had discovered something. He let out a monstrous but chicken-like scream and then collapsed, dead as shit. Yoon, as if struck by a mental attack, fainted. The doctors at the hospital could find nothing wrong with him, but he also developed blindness in his right eye. He lay weakly in bed, his family gathered around him, worried. Yoon, however, wore a look of fear. His mother, who knew about his psychic ability, asked him what he had seen. Terrified, Yoon only said that he couldn't tell. If he did, it would kill everyone. By midnight, Yoon was wandering outside his house like a lost soul. When his mother noticed, she went after him. However, the villagers found her dead body in the sea the next day. Not long after, his grandmother mysteriously hanged herself. These successive tragedies filled Yoon's father with hatred for his son. The grandfather brought in a powerful witch, hoping to exorcise the evil spirit from Yoon. During the exorcism, Yoon appeared to be in great agony. As the witch reached the final stage of the ritual, she started hitting Yoon with her magical instrument, intending to drive the evil spirit out. Suddenly, Yoon opened his eyes wide at the witch, and an invisible force knocked her to the ground. The severely injured witch told Yoon's father that the spirit inhabiting Yoon was a powerful one, capable of summoning minion spirits to possess the weak. Only by killing it could they be safe. At that moment, the spirit within Yoon struck again, killing the witch. Afterward, the grandfather invited two priests to exorcise the evil spirit. However, the unaware too, noticing the numerous injuries on Yoon, suspected he was a victim of abuse rather than demonic possession. This accusation enraged Yoon's father, causing the exorcism to stop. The younger priest named Sang gave Yoon his address, telling him to contact him if he ever needed help. As priest Sang was leaving, Yoon suddenly grabbed him and whispered something in a ghostly language, which drastically changed priest Sang's character. Priest Sang said he needed to go home first, and although the older priest named Father Yang found this odd, he didn't stop him. When Priest Sang got home, he killed his dog and his parents in a fit of rage. Yoon, who had been weak before, suddenly recovered fully after Priest Sang left, even regaining sight in his right eye. Just as Yoon was telling his father about his improved vision, his father tried to strangle him. 
Thankfully, his grandfather came home in time to stop him and told Yoon to run. Feeling helpless, Yoon thought of Priest Sang and went to his house. But when he got there, he saw something horrifying and was too scared to move. At that time, a policewoman and her little daughter drove by and noticed Yoon standing alone in the wilderness. When they called out to him and got no response, the policewoman got out of the car and approached Yoon. She noticed that Yoon was not unresponsive but rather terrified of the house in front of him. So she bravely approached the house and knocked on the door. After killing his parents, Priest Sang felt thirsty and drank a large amount of water. He then received a call from the tutoring center, informing him that his younger brother hadn't shown up. This made him realize that his brother was hiding somewhere in the house. He kicked open the door and found his brother, Choi, hiding under the bed. Just as he was about to attack, there was a knock on the door which momentarily stopped him. When the possessed Sang opened the door, the policewoman noticed blood on his tie and hands. She asked to come in for a drink of water. Once inside, she began to investigate. She smelled a strong scent of blood outside one of the rooms and immediately called for backup. While searching the second room, she found Choi. Priest Sang suddenly lunged at her. Despite her efforts, she was no match for the supernaturally strong priest and was killed. Frightened, Choi ran outside and was stopped by the policewoman's daughter. The girl asked why her mother hadn't returned, but it was too late. The police arrived too late and they carried out the policewoman's body. Meanwhile, Yoon watched as the possessed Sang escaped. Many years later, Yoon, in pursuit of the truth and the culprit, becomes a taxi driver, but his psychic powers are not as strong as they were in his childhood. The little boy Choi, in search of his possessed brother, becomes a demon-hunting priest. One day, Yoon's psychic powers activate and he sees a vision. Following the image from his vision, he finds a corpse at a drainage outlet. After receiving the report, Officer Gill and her colleagues come to investigate. They find the crime scene dry, but strangely, the body is covered in seawater. During the investigation, Gill discovers that a taxi driver is also investigating the same matter, and he is even faster than her. At this point, Yoon identifies a half-paralyzed suspect. He shows the suspect a photo of the possessed priest Sang, causing the suspect to become agitated. Yoon has no choice but to leave, but not before leaving a note and advising the suspect's wife to contact him if her husband starts acting strangely. Just as Yoon was leaving, he meets the suspect's daughter, who mentions her father has become a different person. This statement further confirms Yoon's suspicions. However, as soon as Yoon descends the stairs, he encounters Gil, and he's taken back to the police station. Out of necessity, he admits his special abilities led him to the crime scene. However, Gil does not believe him and detains him at the police station. She then leaves to investigate further. At this point, Yoon's psychic powers activate again. He sees the suspect's home and his daughter. Sensing trouble, he swiftly arrives at the suspect's house just in time to meet Gil. They enter the house to find a large amount of blood. The suspect's wife is dead, her body also covered in seawater, and both the suspect and his daughter are missing. When they step outside, they see the supposedly half-paralyzed suspect standing at a distance, glaring at them like a normal person, then he quickly runs away. Gil and Yoon give chase. The suspect leaps over buildings and crashes through glass. Eventually, they corner him on a rooftop. Yoon leaps forward to block the suspect, but the suspect seems impervious to their attacks. After several rounds, they finally manage to subdue him. The suspect uses a terrifying tone to confess how he killed his wife and daughter. Officer Gill, unable to bear it, steps forward to hit him, but Yoon pulls her sexy body back. Gill insists on taking the suspect to the police station. Looking at the immobile suspect on the ground, Yoon realizes the ghost has temporarily left. He wants to carry the suspect downstairs. Just as Gil turns around to pick up the murder weapon, Yoon locks the rooftop door and runs off with the suspect. Yoon takes the suspect to his friend Yuk's fortune-telling shop to exorcise the ghost. Yuk is a traditional medium, but his powers are not strong, and he is afraid of dealing with ghosts. He knows that the master demon is powerful and is reluctant to assist with the exorcism. But in the end, he can't resist Yoon. For his own safety, Yuk enlists the help of Choi and a veteran exorcist to assist with the exorcism. While the four of them are discussing how to exorcise the ghost, the suspect's body levitates, once again possessed. The veteran exorcist has to press on with the exorcism ceremony. As soon as the ceremony starts, the suspect begins to reveal the veteran exorcist's scandals, causing him to lose his balance. Then he begins humiliating Choi. Fearing that the young Choi will be possessed, the veteran exorcist forces him to leave. At this point, Gil traces to the fortune-telling shop, intending to take the suspect away. 
Yoon tries to stop her, saying that they are performing an exorcism, but Gil does not believe his bullshit, considering them all mad. Just as Gil is about to break into the ceremony, the veteran exorcist steps out and announces that the exorcism was successful. Gil handcuffs the suspect and puts him in the police car. Suddenly, the suspect wakes up, looks at Yoon, and repeats a phrase Yoon once said to his daughter. Shocked, Yoon knocks on the car window, warning Gil to be careful of the suspect's eyes, but Gil ignores him and drives off. On his way home, the veteran exorcist murmured to Choi that Yoon and the others have provoked something they shouldn't have. After saying this, he walked aimlessly towards the road, sending himself straight to meet Jesus. Gil took the suspect back to the police station for questioning. She believed that the suspect was pretending to be sick. Suddenly, the suspect emitted a strong, fishy smell, asked for a large jug of water, and then began to speak. He declared that he came from the sea, and his kind all came from the sea, before calling out the master demon's name. He grabbed a pen and began to stab his own right eye. The police rushed him to the hospital. At this time, Yoon arrived at the station and saw that the suspect had triggered his psychic powers. In a trance, he saw the little girl was alive. He tried to explain to Gil that he could see people who were possessed, and handed her a file, which contained information about unsolved supernatural cases, all related to the master demon. Furthermore, seawater would be found at each crime scene, and the culprits would all stab out their own eyes and terminate themselves. Gil could not bear to listen and wanted to leave, but Yoon told her that the suspect's daughter was still alive. At the hospital, Gil discovered that the cases in the file were real. She began to believe Yoon and allowed him to question the suspect in the ward. However, Yoon didn't understand that he was dealing with a group of evil spirits. He didn't manage to extract the truth. Instead, the spirits discovered his psychic ability to see them. Yoon, unable to get any clues, decided to find the veteran exorcist again for another exorcism. He then discovered that the veteran exorcist had passed away. Choi initially thought it was suicide, but Yoon explained that it was due to the failed exorcism. He told Choi that the suspect's daughter was still alive and asked him to help with another exorcism to find clues. But Choi began to waver in his faith in exorcism. Despite his reluctance, he still refused Yoon's request. That night, Choi dreamt of the dead priest, whose face was covered in blood, blaming him. The next day, individuals sent by the church treated the veteran exorcist as though he was mentally unstable. This forced Choi to reconsider the meaning of exorcism. Meanwhile, Gil couldn't prove that the suspect's daughter was still alive, and she went to privately search at random. But time was of the essence. Out of desperation, she had to ask for Yuke's help. Yuk began the exorcism, but the evil spirit retaliated with a roar like a goose that caused Yuk to vomit blood and collapse. At that moment, Choi arrived and asked everyone to leave the room so he could take over. Yoon and Gil rushed to the suspect's house once again to look for the object the evil spirit was possessing. Yoon tried to use his psychic abilities, but was stopped by the evil spirit. He lost consciousness and started attacking Gil. But Gil was agile in her skinny muscles, and she managed to knock Yoon out, returning him to normal. They then found the possessed object and burned it. Back at the hospital, Choi fought the evil spirit time after time. Eventually, he discovered that the spirit possessing the suspect was just a minion. He forced it to reveal the name of the master spirit. Unable to bear Choi's magical questioning, the suspect called out for the master demon to save him. Suddenly, a huge ghostly figure appeared behind Choi, causing him to vomit blood. Although it was only a hallucinatory mental attack, it was enough to nearly unconscious. Choi struggled to stay awake and used his last bit of strength to force the evil spirit out of the suspect. The suspect vomited a huge amount of water and then passed out. Choi left the ward and told Yuk that the suspect would reveal the location of his daughter. He then left, weak. Gil and Yoon received the message and quickly found the address, successfully rescuing the little girl from a basement. The next day, Choi visited the hospital again to see the suspect. He wanted to make sure the evil spirit had truly left the suspect. Observing that the suspect spoke normally and claimed to see no more ghostly apparitions, Choi was finally able to breathe a sigh of relief. Meanwhile, Gil learned from her colleague that the suspect would not be prosecuted. The reason given was that the senior officers believed they had apprehended the wrong person. This left Gil very frustrated as she couldn't explain that the killings were due to possession by a ghost. She went to the hospital to see the little girl and found that Yoon had already arrived. 
The little girl asked Yoon if it was her father who had killed her mother. Yoon comforted her by saying that wasn't really her father, and even shared that he was possessed when he was young and did bad things to his family too. But the evil spirit has left, so he hoped she could forgive her possessed father. The little girl burst into tears. Listening to Yoon's words, Gil could tell that Yoon had had a tough life, and she invited him to dinner as a thank you. Gil asked about the term guests, and Yoon explained that in their village, whenever someone was found to be possessed by a ghost, they would say, a guest has arrived. He also told Gil that the master demon was sending out its minions to possess and kill people everywhere. His goal was to capture the master demon. However, Gil expressed that she still found it hard to accept. The next day, Choi arrived at the home of the dead exorcist to clean up his belongings. He reflected on his path of exorcism, where he and the veteran exorcist only had each other for support. Now that he was gone, Choi knew he had to rely on himself. At this moment, Yoon found his way to the veteran exorcist's house. He came to thank Choi for his willingness to help exorcise the ghost, which had facilitated smooth progress. Choi asked why the minion spirit's powers had suddenly weakened during the exorcism, wondering if Yoon had done something. Yoon simply replied that he had severed the connection between the master demon and the minion spirit. Notably, the master demon was also the killer of the veteran exorcist. This revelation provided Choi with a target for revenge, to find the master demon. Yoon remembered that the suspect, while being possessed, had mentioned that the master demon would go looking for Priest Sang's brother he hadn't managed to kill years ago. To gather clues, Yoon visited his hometown, a place he had been reluctant to return to. While having a meal with his grandfather, a neighbor came to invite his grandfather for a drink, but left immediately after seeing Yoon. Yoon knew that the locals were still afraid of him, but he didn't mind. It was this fear that had even driven his father to run away from home, never to be heard from again. That night, Yoon dreamt of his grandfather being trapped by the demon inside a bag, his face covered in blood, ceaselessly urging Yoon to run for his shitty life. Awakened, Yoon looked at his sleeping grandfather, his only remaining family and the last thing he was determined to protect. The next day, Yoon pretended to be a reporter to inquire about the whereabouts of the possessed priest's brother. However, the orphanage that had taken him in only disclosed that the brother had been taken away after high school. The lead ended there. That evening, Yoon's psychic abilities suddenly activated, and he once again saw the crime scene. He rushed to the police station to find Gil. Gil was still half doubtful. She let her colleagues investigate the information. Unexpectedly, they found a missing woman who matched the description provided. The following day, they each started their search for the killer, who was possessed by the master demon and killed many innocent people, including the veteran exorcist. In the psychic realm, Yoon saw that the killer, like him, was also a taxi driver, and there was a monkey hanging in the cab. He began to query his fellow drivers and inspect the cars one by one. Days passed without any progress until on the way home, Yoon had an unexpected psychic episode. He connected with the killer's vision and thoughts and realized that the killer was preparing to strike again. Yoon asked his passenger to get off, then pursued the killer himself. He encountered a taxi playing the same music he had heard in the psychic realm. To get the taxi to stop, Yoon blocked the road with his vehicle and pretended to be lost, hoping the driver would get out. However, the driver reversed and accelerated, charging at Yoon. Yoon reacted quickly, narrowly avoiding the attack, and then chased after the cab. Enraged, Yoon repeatedly overtook and rammed into the killer's vehicle. Eventually, they reached the outskirts where Yoon drove straight into the killer's car, causing both vehicles to veer off the road. The impact knocked Yoon unconscious. When he slowly came to and got out to check, the killer had already disappeared. Yoon opened the trunk to find a deceased girl, which infuriated him. Yoon turned to call Gil, but the lurking killer struck him on the head. Just as the killer was about to finish him off, a passing construction vehicle saved his life. When Yoon awoke again, he was in the hospital, the sound of his brother's crying echoing in his ears, rebuking him for his recklessness. Pulling back the curtains, he saw Yuk weeping over a heavily bandaged mummy, which left him speechless. Determined to stop the killer, Yoon, against better judgment, forced himself to leave the hospital. Upon hearing the news, Gil rushed to the hospital. Yoon hoped she could help find clues, but she said she couldn't assist without solid evidence. This angered Yoon. Despite her refusal to help the next day, Gil lied to a senior officer to initiate an investigation. They found the killer's taxi in a scrapyard. As they were about to inspect it, Gil spotted a shady man who panicked and fled upon making eye contact. After a chase, they managed to bring him back to the station for questioning. 
However, the man, who seemed mentally disturbed, wouldn't answer and kept mumbling to himself. Helpless, they had to release him and look for other leads. That night, Yoon encountered the master demon in his dreams. It seemed to be threatening him and scaring him with a minion spirit. Startled awake, a confused Yoon received a call from Gil asking to meet. She proposed an exchange of information. Yoon was reluctant, thinking Gil still didn't trust him. However, Gil wanted Yoon to see things from a police perspective. Finally, they each took a step back and shared the information they had. The next day, Yoon and Yuk also arrived at the scrapyard. Pretending to repair a car, they ran into the man Gil had apprehended earlier. Upon seeing them, the man became notably anxious. From the man's headphones came the music Yoon had heard in the killer's taxi, making Yoon certain that this was the exact killer. He pulled out a club, attempted to apprehend the man, but was discovered by the man's brother, Min. They tried to explain to Min that his brother might be possessed by a ghost, but they were chased out of the scrapyard. Yoon asked Yuk to stay behind and watch while he went to find reinforcements. Elsewhere, Gil and her colleagues found a suspect. The suspect had barricaded himself on the rooftop, holding a knife and resisting arrest. Surrounded by the police, the suspect turned and jumped off the roof. In the moment of collective shock, Gil also leapt off the roof, landed safely, and managed to apprehend the suspect with a swift kick. At this point, the man in the scrapyard office suddenly had a fit. He kept complaining about how his mother used to beat him when he was young, and how his brother Min ran away instead of helping him. The brother's erratic behavior scared Min, who fled from the office, bumping into Yuk, who had been secretly observing. Now, Min believed that his brother was possessed and agreed to let them help with an exorcism. Soon after, Yoon met with Min, who mentioned that his brother was normally stable, but ever since he was rejected by a girl he had a crush on, he became very strange. Yoon guessed that the girl mentioned was probably the first victim. Yoon brought Min to Choi, hoping that Choi could help exercise Min's brother. Initially, Choi wasn't willing to help, but seeing the look of concern in Min's eyes reminded Choi of his own childhood. Therefore, he agreed to accompany them to the scrapyard for the exorcism. Yuk helped Yoon with the blessing, but due to a serious injury from the previous, he was scared and didn't dare to confront the master demon again. The three of them arrived at the office. Choi took out an object wrapped in a handkerchief and placed it in the man's hand. The man had no reaction. Choi then pulled Yoon outside and said that the man was not possessed, as those who are possessed would react to even a hidden cross. But Yoon insisted that a ghost was definitely involved. Involved. Just then, the gloomy sky began raining dead crows, causing them to realize that the situation was far from simple. On the other side, Gil found the third kidnapped girl, Ju, who was able to escape because the car that kidnapped her broke down due to chasing and hitting Yoon previously. However, she didn't see the perpetrator's face, only that it happened in a scrapyard and that there were two perpetrators. Upon hearing this, Gil realized Yoon was right again. Min's brother was one of the perpetrators. She contacted her colleagues and headed to the scrapyard to apprehend the culprits. Yoon and Choi returned to the office to exercise Min's brother. Yoon showed the man a photo of the possessed priest Sang, which didn't elicit any reaction from the man. But Choi was surprised and questioned why Yoon had that photo. Just then, a gust of wind blew out the candle. The man broke free and held a knife to Choi's neck. Yoon called out to Min to help persuade his brother not to harm Choi. But unexpectedly, the brother hit Yoon over the head with a wrench. It turned out that the real person who was possessed was Min, not his brother. They fought back but were tied up and thrown aside. Min drank a large amount of water and then regurgitated a pile of water and screws. It turned out that Choi had inadvertently caused harm to him during the exorcism. Min, in a terrifying demonic voice, told Choi that if he had been obedient, the policewoman wouldn't have died in the past. Hearing this, Yoon realized that the possessed Sang in the photo was Choi's brother, and Choi was the one he had been looking for, and the one who hadn't been killed by the master demon many years ago. Just as the possessed Min was about to harm Choi, Gil arrived and gave them a beating, saving their lives. But because the man blocked her, Min was able to escape. Gil remembered Ju, the only victim who hadn't died in the kidnapping case, and rushed to Ju's house with Yoon. At this time, Ju had gone out to buy candy because her daughter refused to take her medicine. Unbeknownst to her, the brother had already set an ambush nearby. He pretended to ask for directions, but Ju recognized the monkey in the car and the gestures the brother used to make. She screamed in a chicken voice and ran for her shitty life. When Ju reached her front door, fear made her unable to hold her keys. Just as she was about to call for help, a shadow appeared behind her. Yoon and Gil hurried to Ju's home, only to find a set of keys and a mobile phone on the ground. 
they knew they were a step too late. Gil phoned her senior, hoping to get the man to reveal where his brother Min was hiding. However, the man was so terrified that he was speaking gibberish. Choi remembered that he and the man were in the same predicament. He told him that his own brother Sang was also possessed by a ghost, and he would do everything he could to help the possessed Min recover. This reassurance finally got the man to disclose his brother's hiding place. Just as Min was preparing to dismember Ju, Gil and Yoon arrived. They furiously punched the possessed Min, who, however, laughed maniacally and became more violent. When they were exhausted, Gil finally subdued Min by pulling out a stun gun. They handcuffed him in the car. Yoon asked Gil to give him some time to exercise Min, but they discovered that Min was biting his own thumb. Yoon knew what he was trying to do and desperately tried to open the car door, but the key fob malfunctioned and the doors were locked. Helplessly, they watched as the possessed Min bit off his thumb, levered up the backrest, and shouted out the master demon's name before stabbing himself to death. When the police arrived at the scene, Gil sat powerlessly aside. Once again, she had witnessed a possessed person taking his own life, and she was unable to stop it. This deeply shook her. Her senior was also baffled as to why Gil and Yoon were always present when strange things occurred. Even Gil herself couldn't explain it. At this moment, the dead men's mother came out of the house, demanding the police to leave quickly. Gil said to the mother that son killed someone. Now he's dead. To her surprise, the mother didn't care at all. Facing such a cold-hearted parent, Gil suddenly understood why her son ended up possessed. The next day, Yoon asked his friend Yuk to join him in guarding Choi's house, because the evil spirit had said the master demon would come for Choi. However, Yuk argued that believing in what an evil spirit says is absurd. Yoon replied that he would do it himself. Hearing this, Yuk suddenly remembered Yoon's last resort and anxiously asked if he would use that. But faced with an irritated Yoon, Yuk could only quietly leave. The next morning, Choi discovered that Yoon was sleeping in the car. He was about to wake him up when he received a phone call. It was Father Yang, who he hadn't seen in years. Father Yang informed Choi that his brother's body had been found. This news left both Choi and Yoon in a state of shock. Choi went to identify the body. The coroner informed them that Sang had likely been dead for 20 years, with the cause of death assessed as suicide by hanging. Just as they were preparing to leave the police station, they ran into Counselor Park, who was always wearing a gentle smile. Father Yang told Choi that she was a kind person, but Choi felt a strange aura about her. Sure enough, Park met with the police chief and requested that the investigation into Sang's death be stopped. The police chief argued that it was a significant case and could not be ignored. However, Park lashed out at him, warning him to obey or face consequences, leaving the chief with no choice but to comply. That evening, Choi took the opportunity to ask Father Yang about his brother's disappearance years ago. Seeing that Choi had grown up, Father Yang revealed that the disappearance was due to a failed exorcism, and Sang had become possessed. The target of their exorcism at the time was Yoon. At that moment, everything made sense to Choi. He realized why Yoon was looking for his brother, and that Sang's possession was actually Yoon's fault. Late in the night, Yoon snuck into the crime scene unnoticed, only to find Choi already there. Seeing Yoon, Choi angrily grabbed him, accusing him of causing his brother's death. Yoon, having been treated this way for many years, didn't avoid the confrontation and admitted to Choi. Just then, Gil arrived at the scene. She ordered them to come with her, threatening to report them for trespassing on a crime scene if they didn't comply. Gil quickly led them to an open area and began recounting the events that had happened 20 years ago. She told them that a policewoman had once saved a child here, but had been killed by the perpetrator. The policewoman was actually Gil's mother. The two men were stunned. Gil looked at Choi sorrowfully and told him that it was all because of his brother that her mother had been killed. She had joined the police force to catch him, but only discovered today that the perpetrator Sang had died long ago. Choi felt guilty to Officer Gil. Yoon, however, stated that it wasn't their fault. He explained that Sang had become possessed while trying to exorcise a demon from him, which indirectly led to the murder of Gil's mother. Upon hearing this, Gil angrily rushed at Yoon, landing a couple of punches. Yoon did not defend himself, allowing Gil to vent her anger. After that, Gil drove away, escaping the scene. Meanwhile, across town, a woman was following a drunken man into an underpass. The drunk man felt a chill down his spine and turned around to find the woman holding a knife, her eyes cold and unflinching. The terrified man fell to the ground and the woman grabbed his greasy head, placing her knife at his throat. He was one gentle slice away from certain death, but just then, a passerby came along. The woman, frustrated, hurriedly left, sparing the drunk man's drunk life. 
The next day, Choi received a message. A woman claimed to be possessed by a demon and asked for the church's help to perform an exorcism. The woman explained that she would often lose consciousness and wander around as if sleepwalking. She would also receive text messages instructing her to kill people. Initially, Choi thought that the woman was mentally unstable and needed a doctor. But the woman revealed that these messages were from the master demon. Choi informed Yoon about this, and they set out to find the woman. When they arrived, the woman was about to leave her house. She began cursing at Choi and Yoon. They confirmed that the woman was indeed possessed. Yoon snatched her bag, revealing it to be full of knives. Suddenly, the woman screamed like a chicken and collapsed. As Choi tried to help her, she began to convulse on the ground. Bystanders thought Choi and Yoon were harming the woman and tried to intervene. The woman feigned tears and used the commotion to escape back to her house. Fortunately, Gil and her partner happened to be nearby investigating a case. They managed to disperse the crowd and control the situation. After the awkward encounter, the three of them saw the woman emerge from her house again, this time with her wrists slashed and bleeding profusely. The police rushed the woman to the hospital and brought Choi and Yoon back to the station. Before leaving, Yoon warned Gil that the woman was possessed. Despite still being angry at Yoon, Gil couldn't ignore his warning considering their previous experiences. At the hospital, Gil and her partner questioned the woman. Her name was Kim, and her boyfriend had been reported missing. Gil was actually searching for her when she happened to run into Yoon and Choi. Gil asked Kim if she had killed her boyfriend. Enraged, Kim denied the accusation. Seeing Kim about to lose control, the nurse ushered them out of the room. Gil had planned to wait outside the room to prevent Kim from killing herself, but the nurse suddenly came out and told them that Kim said her boyfriend was waiting in the parking lot. Hearing this, Gil and the others hopped into the car and rushed to the parking lot. Halfway there, Gil suddenly remembered that demons are expert liars. Fearing they had fallen into a trap, she sent her partner to the parking lot while she returned to the hospital. Upon reaching the parking lot, the partner surprisingly found the boyfriend's body. When Gil returned to the hospital, Kim had disappeared. At the same time, back at the police station, Yoon had a sudden spiritual revelation. He saw Kim in a company talking to an employee. This employee was the same drunken man who had almost been killed earlier. Kim picked up a craft knife and stabbed the man in the throat. The injury was severe enough to incapacitate him, but not enough to kill him instantly. She told the man that they would die tomorrow morning when everyone else arrived for work. Choi noticed something was wrong with Yoon and tried to get his attention. Unexpectedly, Yoon grabbed his throat with such force that even two police officers couldn't stop him. Just then, Gil returned to the station. Having seen Yoon in this state before, she didn't hesitate and managed to snap him out of it. Yoon conveyed what he had seen and asked Gil to help save the man. However, Gil, still angry at Yoon, refused to go. Thus, Yoon and Choi went to Kim's house to investigate the cause of her possession. They met Kim's best friend, who said Kim had been acting strangely since her boyfriend took his own life. They were about to get married, and Kim was pregnant. Afterward, Gil and her partner arrived at the company. To speed up the search, they decided to split up. Gil didn't dare tell her partner about Kim's possession, but she warned him to be careful. But he ran into Kim as soon as he entered. Choi and Yoon were driving to the company when Yoon's psychic powers suddenly activated again. Their car veered into the oncoming lane. Luckily, Choi grabbed the steering wheel and they narrowly avoided an accident. Choi asked what Yoon had seen, and Yoon hurriedly told him to call Gil and warn her about the danger at the company. However, when Gil heard her partner was in trouble, she rushed into the office without hesitation. Inside, Gil found the injured man and was about to call for backup when Kim suddenly attacked her from behind and overpowered her very soon. This demon was even stronger than the previous ones, and since Kim had willingly given her body to it, it was capable of normal speech. It revealed to Gil that Kim's boyfriend had been bullied by the man and his friends, and the stress had driven him to suicide. Kim had witnessed her boyfriend's death and was on the verge of a breakdown. She was planning to kill herself by jumping off a building when the demon saved her and turned her into a vengeful spirit. After revealing this, Kim brandished the knife, preparing to end Gil's sexy life. At that moment, Yoon and Choi arrived at the company, loudly calling out for Gil. Upon hearing Choi's voice, Kim, frightened, dropped the knife and ran. Yoon and Choi saw Kim and chased after her, but Kim sprinted away like a seasoned runner, and despite Choi's best efforts, he couldn't catch up. Yoon traced her smell to a car and managed to knock Kim off her feet. He got out of the car to check on her, but Kim, seemingly unharmed, throttled Yoon with such force that he was about to suffocate. Suddenly, Kim let out a strange cry and lost her strength. It turned out Choi had arrived and used a crucifix to press against the demon's weak spot on the back of the neck, saving Yoon. 
Seeing Kim fall, Choi quickly used a holy binding spell, and the two could finally breathe a sigh of relief. Yoon returned to the company and found Gil and her partner, while Choi found a resting room to prepare for the exorcism. He carefully set out the holy instruments. But then, Kim woke up. She threatened Choi, saying he would die like his family did. Choi, finding her annoying, was about to gag her with a cloth when Kim stated that Yoon was just like them. Choi remembered the demon saying the same thing before and couldn't help but ask Kim what she meant. But Choi made a grave mistake. One must never respond to a demon's words. Choi suddenly fell into a hallucination and was about to unbind Kim. Luckily, Yoon and Gil arrived just in time to push Choi away, bringing him back to his senses. The three realized how dangerous this demon was and decided to work together. But this was Gil's first exorcism, and she was continually distracted by the demon, even seeing visions of her deceased mother interrupting Choi's exorcism. Midway through the exorcism, Choi realized something was wrong. The demon's powers were weakening, but so was Kim's life force. The demon claimed that Kim originally didn't want to live and intended to take her with it in death. Yoon pulled out a photo of Kim with her boyfriend, telling her to think about the baby in her stomach. Hearing this, Kim regained hope. So Choi quickly finished the final prayer and drew a holy cross in front of the demon. The demon finally couldn't resist, let out a loud scream and disappeared, leaving behind a large amount of seawater. After that, Gil finally understood the dangers Yoon and Choi had faced. She also realized that her mother was killed by the demon, not by Yoon. She offered to join them in hunting down the demon. The next day, Yoon, dragging Choi along, went to the place where Choi's brother ended his life, hoping to find more clues. Choi started singing a hymn to activate his senses and rushed towards an open field, frantically digging with his bare hands. Yoon watched nervously as Choi unearthed a corpse. They went to the police station to report the incident, which quickly reached the police chief. With two bodies found in quick succession, the news could no longer be suppressed. Yoon called Gil, hoping she could help find more information. But Gil realized that this case was not simple, as the corpse was related to a case her mother was investigating before her death. Gil returned home and found her mother's collected clues. On the last page of an important notebook, it was written, Counselor Park. At this moment, Park is playing the good guy, putting on a show for her constituents. The police chief calls her, saying that they've got a major issue. Park responds with cold indifference and asks him to handle it for her. She hangs up, smashing her phone in frustration. She swears and smashes everything in sight. It turns out the female corpse belongs to a high schooler who disappeared 20 years ago. To gather more clues, Gil seeks out her mother's old colleague, who is now the police chief. However, the chief insists that Gil's mother made mistakes in her investigation. Park has an alibi, and he urges Gil not to pursue this case further. Meanwhile, Choi tells Yoon that after studying the data on three demons, he discovered that the three possessed individuals all had ties to the organization called Sharing Hand. Furthermore, all three knew Counselor Park. As Gil leaves the police station, Yoon shares this information with her. All evidence seems to point towards Counselor Park. But the question remains, how can they find the evidence? Choi goes to the church to meet Father Yang. This time, Father Yang is scaring the children, warning them that those who love to play video games will go to hell. But the children see him as nothing more than a strange uncle, completely ignoring his bullshit. Choi tells Father Yang that he suspects Counselor Park is the master demon. But Father Yang says this can't be possible, as Park often prays at the church. How could a possessed person enter a church? By nightfall, Choi waits at the church entrance. He sees Park entering the church for a devout prayer. Waiting at the entrance, he decides to test her further. As she prepares to leave, he strikes up a conversation. He asks her if she believes in God, to which Park replies, yes. Choi asks further if she denies the existence of the devil and Satan. Park's face changes, but she answers yes before leaving with a smile. This leaves Choi somewhat at a loss because a demon cannot deny Satan. Elsewhere, Yoon and Gil arrive at a mental hospital. They want to find the high schooler's school guard to gather information. No matter how Gil asks, the school guard doesn't respond and just continues to draw. Yoon walks up and takes a look at the drawing. He is shocked to see a black face with a bloody right eye. But when Yoon asks him if he had seen the master demon, the guard doesn't respond. So Yoon pulls out a picture of Counselor Park and asks if this is the master demon. The guard looks and screams in terror. His body convulses, his eyes roll back, and he can't breathe. 
The caretakers have no choice but to ask Yoon and Gil to leave. The next day, the three, guided by Gil's mother's notes, find the high schooler's good friend from those years. When she hears that her good friend has long been dead, she can't believe it and breaks down in tears. The group returns to her home, where the friend reveals that she always thought the high schooler had run away from home without saying goodbye. She recalls seeing Counselor Park and the high schooler having an argument in a classroom years ago. The high schooler, unable to bear the bullying, retaliated and pushed Park, who in response grabbed a chair and beat her. Fearful, the friend ran to get help from the school guard. But when he went to check, he returned with a terrified look on his face, telling the friend to leave and never mention this incident to anyone else. As the three leave the friend's house, they plan their next steps. Choi, feeling guilty towards Gil, deliberately provokes her, telling her to quit and stop helping catch the master demon. Gil thinks Choi is being unreasonable and angrily drives away. Yoon understands Choi's intentions, confronts him that they should not disband. They need more help to prevent more people from dying. Choi knows Yoon is right, but he has tested Counselor Park and found no signs of possession. Yoon says he can discern it and asks to meet her once. The next day, Yoon and Choi reach the event venue of the Sharing Hand. Yoon, pretending to be a fan of Park, brings up the matter of the high schooler's body being exhumed, hoping to provoke Park. However, Park maintains her smiles throughout, feigning ignorance about the high schooler and showing no signs of being affected. Yoon cuts to the chase, saying that even though she doesn't know the high schooler, she does know the master demon. At these words, Park's face changes and she turns around to leave. Choi sees this as the opportune moment and blocks her path. He says he wants to give Park a necklace as a gift and brings out a cross, performing a blessing in front of her. To their surprise, Park graciously accepts it without showing any reaction. Yoon and Choi are left confused and unsure of what is happening. At this point, Father Yang arrives at the venue and finds them. He tells them that if a demon has possessed a person for too long or is too powerful, it might merge with the person to become a full demon, resisting holy symbols and making exorcism difficult. This leaves Yoon and Choi at a loss for what to do next. However, Park retreats to the restroom and starts vomiting. She's indeed been affected by Choi's prayer and the cross. She splashes water on her face in an attempt to recover and pulling out the necklace, yells in anger. The holy necklace shatters into pieces. That night, Gil receives a call that the school guard has escaped from the mental hospital. She immediately worries about the friend's safety. Meanwhile, the guard appears in the friend's husband's restaurant. He's drinking water non-stop, his body swollen and turning blue like a zombie. The husband calls her, telling her to rest at home and not to wander around. He promises to come home for dinner after work, but when he turns around, the zombified guard has mysteriously disappeared. At this moment, Yoon suddenly has a premonition. He vaguely sees the high schooler's friend, who is resting at home, being awakened by a passing ambulance. He calls Choi to warn him about the girl's danger and drives straight to her house. At this moment, the girl, who had been resting, is jolted awake by the sound of a metallic crash. She sees the school guard, armed with a knife in her house. Terrified, she hides in her son's room, but the guard, using his monstrous strength, attempts to break down the door. As the wooden door is gradually hacked apart, she calmly hides her son in a closet and prepares herself with a pair of scissors, ready to fight off the demonic guard. Soon after, the three arrive at the girl's house, but it's already too late. The high schooler's friend has also been murdered, and the possessed school guard has stabbed his own right eye, successfully taking his own life. The police arrive at the scene. The girl's husband cries uncontrollably. Yoon is unable to control his own emotions anymore. He leaves Choi and Gil, charging off alone towards the counselor's office, intending to assassinate Park. However, his plan fails and he is arrested and taken to the police station. Choi and Gil visit him at the station. Gil, like Yoon, lost her family because of the master demon, but she didn't react impulsively. She wonders what has made Yoon so angry and determined. Yoon, not willing to revisit his past, tells them that instead of wasting time here, they should be keeping an eye on Park. After leaving the police station, Choi goes to find Father Yang, hoping he can act as a mediator to reconcile Yoon and Counselor Park. Father Yang reveals that after the failed exorcism years ago, he heard that Yoon's mother and grandmother mysteriously died during his possession. This caused the entire village to fear them, and their lives were ruined. This is why Yoon is so determined to destroy the master demon. The next day, Father Yang and Choi meet with Counselor Park. She believes Yoon is mentally ill and refuses to reconcile and release him. But Choi cleverly mentions that many journalists want to interview Yoon about the 20 years old murder case, and he will make sure Yoon says nothing. Hearing that, Park changes her attitude and soon after, Yoon is released. 
Yoon returns home to have dinner with his grandfather. Just then, a frantic old lady visits, saying her granddaughter can see ghosts, just like Yoon could when he was young. She hopes his grandfather can check to see if her granddaughter is possessed. But Yoon's grandfather, wanting to shield Yoon from the ghost, angrily sends her away. Although Yoon knows his grandfather is well-intentioned, he doesn't want others to experience the pain he went through. So under the cover of night, he quietly visits the old lady's house to inquire about the situation. The old lady's granddaughter is named June, who has had the ability to see all sorts of ghosts since she was young, and it's been getting worse recently. Yoon asks where June's mom lives and is surprised to learn that it's in a district managed by Counselor Park. This makes Yoon suspect that there's more to the situation than it first seems. The next morning, Yoon arrives at the location the old lady mentioned. When Jun's mom hears that her mother sent Yoon, she becomes angry and shoos him away, leaving Yoon both surprised and helpless. He can only retreat downstairs and call the old lady, asking her to smooth things over before he can help. Suddenly, a man, who had been cheerfully waving upstairs, is killed by a large stone that falls from the sky, bursting his head open. Both Yoon and the passersby are stunned. Soon, the police force arrives. Before they can figure out what's going on, Gil spots Yoon standing among the crowd of witnesses. She pulls him aside to ask why he's there. Yoon explains what happened and reveals that the man who was killed is Jun's father. Gil goes upstairs to question Jun's mom. However, Jun's mom doesn't seem to be grieving over her husband's sudden death. Instead, she hopes that the police can leave as quickly as possible. By nightfall, upon hearing the news of her son-in-law's gruesome death, the old lady rushes to her daughter's house and blames her for not believing in the existence of spirits and insists that her refusal to exorcise June led to her husband's terrible demise. June's mom, enraged, tells the old lady to shut up her smelly mouth. The argument is interrupted when June comes in and says she's hungry. The old lady pretends to take June to get something to eat, but she actually brings her to Yuke's shrine. From June, they learn that evil spirits often come to visit her, saying they want to take her to meet someone. When Yoon asks who she's supposed to meet, June timidly replies, the master demon, startling everyone. The next day, June's mom came to the police station for questioning. Throughout the process, she was uncooperative, leaving Officer Gill feeling helpless. Meanwhile, the old lady asked Yoon and Choi to help conduct a possession test on June. Choi pulls out a cross and places it firmly in June's hand. But June shows no reaction at all. Then, Yoon asks June when she started seeing the evil ghost. Slowly, she reveals that she first saw it two months ago, and as time went by, more and more evil spirits appeared. Some even followed her home, which terrified her. However, one particular female ghost was different. She only appeared when June was in her father's car. Yet, whenever June mentioned this to her father, he would become angry. Yoon felt something was amiss. Just as he was about to ask further, June's mom returned. Seeing Yoon, she knew that the old lady was to blame. Angry, she demanded they all leave. Yoon was getting ready to leave. But just then, June, trembling, was staring hard at the front door and began backing away step by step. It turns out she saw an evil ghost enter when June's mom opened the door. Choi quickly stepped in to block June, telling her not to look at the door, but it was too late. June forcefully shook off Choi's hand, shouting at him not to touch her. Witnessing June's change, everyone was startled. Choi pulled out his cross and pressed it onto June's head, causing her to let out a scream like an evil spirit, convulsing and struggling. Yoon stepped in to help subdue June and anxiously asked Choi why she was acting like this if she was not possessed. Choi replied that it might be due to her body condition. She was momentarily possessed just then. June's mom thought they were hurting her daughter, angrily yelling at them. The old lady tried her best to hold back June's mom so Choi could perform an exorcism. Just as June's mom was about to call the police, the exorcism was successful. Seeing her daughter back to normal, June's mom embraced her daughter and began to trust Yoon and Choi. Yoon relayed the details about the female ghost mentioned by June to Gil, asking her to help find more information. After investigation, Gil suspected that June's father had hit and killed this female ghost, which is why the ghost had been following him inside the car. So the three of them went to the community surveillance room. They discovered that the haunting instances of June coincided with when her father appeared on the surveillance footage. They finally understood that June, due to her spiritual sensitivities, had been seeing her father, who was possessed by the ghost. However, with the death of June's father, the incident should have ended. So why was June still seeing ghosts? 
A sudden realization hit Choi. When a person dies, the evil spirit can find a new body to possess. Yoon also realized Jun with her spiritual sensitivities was the perfect haunting target. On the other side, Jun suddenly screamed, pointing out the window and yelling that another evil spirit was coming for her. Her grandmother went to check but saw nothing. However, through June's eyes, there was an evil spirit on the sidewalk, laughing at her. She quickly reached under her bed, pulling out a backpack with a large rock inside. June asked her mother to help her lift the rock to kill the evil spirit, explaining that this was how she exterminated them the last time. Upon hearing this, her mother was shocked to realize that her husband was killed by their daughter throwing the rock. The mom told June that she must never speak of this to anyone. She then retreated to her room, tearfully explaining the truth of the event to her own mother. However, they had no idea that June heard everything from outside the door. Knowing the truth, June's heart darkened. She silently opened the front door and saw a crowd of evil spirits eagerly waiting to enter her house. Showing no expression, she led them into her room. With all the evil spirits merged into her, she became so powerful that she could use her magic at will. She began looking for a place to carry out her next plan. Just then, the trio arrived at June's mother's house looking for June. It was only then that the family realized that June had disappeared. Officer Gill was about to notify the police for assistance, but Yoon stopped her. Yoon believed that June had been framed by the evil spirits, leading to her accidentally killing her own father. It wasn't her fault. However, Gill asked if forgiving June would erase the fact that she had murdered her father. Yoon had no response. But Choi stepped in, explaining to Gil that Yoon was just like June when he was young, possessed by a ghost, his family falling apart, the entire village shunning them. He didn't want June to go through the same pain. Just then, Yoon received a call from June's mom, saying that June had contacted her. The three of them rushed back to June's house, but the old lady said that June's mom had just run out alone. They realized they had fallen for a diversion. With both mother and daughter missing, the three had to search everywhere. Halfway through the search, Choi noticed that Yoon was standing still. It turned out that an evil spirit controlling Jun had triggered Yoon's psychic abilities. He saw Jun standing on a rooftop holding a brick, while Jun's mom was frantically shouting below looking for Jun. The next moment, the massive brick fell and hit the mom on the shoulder, causing her to lose consciousness. Following Yoon's vision, the three of them quickly arrived at the scene of the incident. Gil took care of Jun's mom, while Yoon and Choi split up to find Jun. Choi arrived in the basement, only to find Jun waiting for him with a strange smirk on her face. Just as he was about to call Yoon, the basement door was shut by evil spirits. Unable to open it, Choi had no choice but to perform an exorcism ritual alone. He used a holy handkerchief to bind Jun, then took out his cross to begin praying. However, this was all part of the evil spirit's plan. Pretending to faint, Jun attacked Choi's vulnerability as soon as his guard was down. She made him see images of his deceased parents and brother, who seemingly complained why he was the only one alive. This statement pierced Choi like a knife, causing him to drop and shatter the cross. As a result, Choi lost his divine protection and became just like any ordinary human. Seeing Choi unprotected, the possessed Jun cursed him with piercing pain every night, and that if he dared perform an exorcism again, his flesh and blood would rot and he would die on the third exorcism. Yoon and Gil arrived at the basement door and attempted to break it down, but to no avail. Suddenly, Yoon's psychic abilities were triggered again. He saw evil spirits swarming and stabbing Choi. Just as Yoon regained his senses, the basement door opened by itself. Choi mustered his last bit of strength to stumble out of the door before collapsing. Gil urgently rushed Choi to the hospital, while Yoon called Yuk for help and continued to guard the basement door. Choi woke up in the hospital. To the doctors, he had inexplicably fainted with no physical injuries. Only he could feel the effects of the curse. Upon learning that Yoon was still in the basement, Choi insisted on going back. However, seeing how weak he was, no one would let him leave. Choi argued that if he didn't return, both Yoon and Jun would be in danger. This left Yuk and Gil with no choice but to obey. In the basement, Yoon was taken aback as he saw Choi being carried in. But Yuk told him that there's no one else and Choi was the best priest they had. However, the evil spirit this time was exceptionally powerful, so Choi proposed splitting into two teams. Yoon and Yuk set off to find the object possessed by the evil spirit. They arrived at Jun's father's car and found a kitchen knife beneath the seat. 
Yuke immediately performed a sealing spell to seal the object. Meanwhile, Choi and Gil resorted to force, tying June in front of her mother to perform the exorcism. June was possessed because she was afraid her mother disliked her. Thus, performing the exorcism in her mother's presence offered a chance to truly awaken June. Facing a powerful evil spirit, Choi was still fearful. As soon as June uttered a spell, Choi felt intense pain all over his body. Despite the pain, he continued with the exorcism. As expected, the evil spirit weakened significantly after the object was sealed, gradually unable to resist Choi's prayer. At this time, Yoon and Yuk found a place with potent spiritual energy. As Choi continued praying, the evil spirit possessing Jun weakened further. Seeing that Yoon couldn't destroy the object, Yuk offered to do it himself. He chanted a spell to gather spiritual power, and with a hard strike, the kitchen knife broke into three pieces. Jun then spat out a large amount of seawater and returned to normal. Everyone breathed a sigh of relief upon seeing Jun and her mother hugging and crying. The next day, Yoon and Choi visited Jun. To thank them, Jun offered to check if Counselor Park was possessed by the powerful Master Demon. Choi then brought Jun to the church to meet Counselor Park. However, Jun reported that she saw no sign of the Master Demon, only a ghost of a female student following her. On the way home, the three were filled with mixed feelings. If Park wasn't the Master Demon, then where had the powerful demon gone? At the same time, Park arrived in a dark tunnel where the Master Demon was waiting for her. As the Master Demon revealed and flexed his true form in front of Park, she showed no fear but instead smiled, because she hoped that the Master Demon could help her deal with the trio. The next day, June and her grandmother arrived at Yuke's shrine. They decided to perform a ritual on June to close her third eye, so she would no longer see ghosts. However, this meant she would not be able to help them find the Master Demon. Yoon noticed June often glanced behind him. Since losing his ability to see ghosts, he had been wondering if his deceased mother and grandmother would come to see him. He then asked June, who hesitated before answering that no one was behind him. Yoon understood that his misfortunes had created a peculiar situation where even ghosts dared not stay near him. This realization filled him with a sense of loneliness. The following day, Yoon sought out Gil regarding Jun's situation. Officer Gil stated she had classified Jun as a victim, thus there would be no record. However, another unsolvable case was added to the police files. Despite feeling helpless, Yoon felt relieved. That evening, Choi suffered from a severe curse at home, so severe that he was pale, sweating, and could hardly stand. There was a knock at the door. Struggling against the pain, Choi hobbled to answer it. Outside was Yoon, who was shocked at Choi's appearance. However, Choi brushed it off as a cold. Back in the room, Yoon pulled out an amulet from his pocket, saying it was given by Yuk to ward off evil, but Choi blocked it, asking if he was trying to give an amulet to a priest. Yoon felt ridiculous and put the amulet back in his pocket. Yoon then expressed his gratitude, as Choi had saved everyone. However, he also needed Choi's help to find new leads related to the master demon from his deceased brother's belongings. Choi brought out his brother's possessions. Among the clutter, Yoon identified a familiar ring. Comparing it with a family photo, he confirmed the ring belonged to his father, who had left home and disappeared many years ago. Yoon took the ring home and examined it, but couldn't make sense of it. He decided to call his grandfather back home for information, but his grandfather was completely unaware. Yoon had no choice but to seek Gil's help at the police station. After hearing the reason, Gil utilized the police's information search system and quickly located the workplace of Yoon's father. Yoon arrived at the scene and saw his father getting ready for a fight. He shouted at his father, which caused his father to halt his attack. However, Yoon's father seemed to not recognize the person in front of him. To his surprise, his father was shocked and ran away from the scene. Yoon chased after him, finally managing to stop him in a small alley. Just as he was about to explain himself, Yoon's father pulled out a weapon and swung it at Yoon. Yoon didn't understand why his father was treating him this way. His father then shouted at him to stay away, saying that he had been running from the master demon all his life. Seeing his father's terrified expression, Yoon was at a loss for words. Gil arrived at the scene. Knowing Yoon must have been devastated, she called Choi and asked him to meet with Yoon's father and gather information. Choi arrived at Yoon's father's residence. He introduced himself as a priest and asked a few questions, but Yoon's father demanded Choi to show his cross as proof. He felt relieved only after seeing Choi pull out a cross necklace. Choi asked him if he had seen the master demon. This question triggered a panic attack in Yoon's father, who began to tremble and back away, pulling out his knife and accusing Choi. Seeing his fear, Choi quickly explained that his brother Sang had tried to exorcise Yoon, but was killed in the past. 
At these words, Yoon's father came back to his senses and lowered the knife. Choi then presented the ring from the belongings to Yoon's father, asking why his ring was left in his brothers. Yoon's father painfully recalled that he had tried to strangle his son, who had been possessed by the master demon, but was stopped by Yoon's grandfather, allowing Yoon to escape. He had chased after Yoon, but on the way he met Choi's odd-acting priest brother. He followed Sang to the back mountain, only to find him hanging from a tree. Yoon's father had rushed to save him, but Sang suddenly grabbed his finger and broke it, taking his ring at the same time. Finally, the man pulled out a stack of notebooks, explaining that he had not run away, but had been collecting information on the Master Demon. In the end, he discovered that there was no such person as the Master Demon, or rather, the Master Demon was never a living person to begin with. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.